Yeah, if you were at the mixed models presentation, I did say a bit about significance testing for fixed effects, so it's probably worth pointing out that these may look a bit different to what you're used to if you do um, analysis of variance or fit general linear models. So they're based on what are known as walled F-tests and T-tests, so it's basically doing F-tests and T-tests in the same way, but the degrees of freedom for these tests needs to be carefully calculated. And this will be done by the software, but just to give a bit of understanding, it needs to correspond to the variance of whatever you're testing and reflect all sources of variability in your fixed effect. If the data are completed at each time point, it's quite straightforward. It's going to be basically the F test will be what you're used to from analysis of variance. It'll be a, a sort of ratio of the mean squares from the analysis of variance table. And the degrees of freedom is going to be a whole number and it will be either the degrees of freedom of the, the patient or the residual. But as soon as you've got unbalanced data, it becomes much less straightforward to calculate. It's usually done by an approximation and in mixed models you can't really calculate it easily by hand so you rely on the software to do that. So just to show what this is some of the SAS output from model 6 and first of all it gives the tests of overall fixed effects. It doesn't give us lots of mean squares and things which I find is quite Good. it keeps things fairly simple, it just shows us the degrees of freedom for each of the effects tested, the F statistic and the p-value. So here we've got uh, baseline diastolic blood pressure and that's highly significant because it's taking out a lot of the variability that was occurring between the patients before they had treatment and the treatment effect is also significant as is the visit but we don't have a treatment by visit interaction. And you'll see that these degrees of freedom, are, they are whole numbers, but they've been rounded. They wouldn't actually be proper whole numbers, but they are specific to each of the effects being tested. I've just put the difference, the sort of thing we'd be interested in probably is the differences in the treatment effects. So I've just put those up here. And again, they've got slightly different degrees of freedom because there's different numbers of patients receiving each pair of treatments just shows there's only a significant difference between treatments A and C it wasn't quite significant between B and C and of course because we fitted the interaction we can get the treatment difference at all of the post treatment visit effects so it starts at visit 3 because we had two pre-treatment visits this is effectively sort of doing an analysis at every time point and we didn't find that there was a significant interaction so we don't have any evidence that the treatment effect is different at the individual time points. By looking at some of the significant effects between, we've got A minus C is significant at the first post-treatment visit but not at, I think, some of the other ones it's significant at the fifth, well that would be the third one, not at the fourth one and not at the second one. So you can see that would cause confusion and I think the non-significant interaction is an indication that perhaps we don't want to look at the treatment effect at every visit individually because it would be quite confusing. We'd managed to justify quite a complicated covariance pattern in model six. It's maybe interesting just to see how does that affect the fixed effects estimate, our treatment effects. So these are the treatment differences and that was what we would have got with model one with that simple structure which is equivalent to just fitting patient effects as random. This is what we got with model six with the separate surplus or banded pattern for each of the treatments. So Really the results, I mean the overall conclusions are going to be exactly the same, the results are quite similar, the only thing you'll probably notice is that the standard errors in the brackets are a bit different um, and that's because this model 6 allowed a separate pattern of covariances for each treatment and I think A and C on the whole had higher variances than treatment B so it's got the highest standard error compared to, so it's Standard error has gone up a bit compared to model 1 and then the standard error in model 6 is a bit lower for A minus B because I think overall that pair had the lowest variances. 
So it hasn't made a great deal of difference. And I think if we'd had more missing data, it might have made more difference, or if the covariance parameters had been more different. So it's difficult to say whether it was worth getting the more complex structure. Sometimes the structure itself is interesting, you know, to be able to say this is how the data pattern of data are correlated. We've got different patterns for the different groups and that's interesting in itself. But here it hasn't really affected our conclusions. We've got slightly more appropriate estimates of the treatment effects and the standard errors.